Good morning, creative writers. It's Cody Miller, your instructor for uh, English 261. I'm here with the review for our last week, as well as reminders for the upcoming week um, in terms of the reader responses, in terms of the extra credit, uh, and in terms of workshop, which I'm asking you to review the guidelines and so forth, okay? So I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can follow along with Google. I apologize if I'm not quite as uh, energetic and or uh, you can't hear me as well. Obviously, you can tell I'm coming down with a little bit of a cold. Uh, it put me down yesterday. I'm back on my feet today and sending out your announcement to you in hopes of getting you going for the weekend. So let's see here. All right, so here's my screen. A couple things that I want to remind you of is the reader response number seven has been posted. And so if you're in the announcements, or not the announcements, my apologies, the assignment submissions on Moodle, it's with all the other reader responses. So we scroll down you will see that reader response seven is listed right here. Now, one thing to remember about reader response seven is that there are more readings that are fair game for this particular reader response. One thing I noticed is that it's a little harder to write the reader responses on those really, really short flash fiction pieces within our text in those PDFs. So I've tried to provide you with some more stories that I think are better representatives of what I'm asking you to do in this last unit for your particular flash fiction piece. So if you come here uh, on the upper right hand side or upper left hand side and you go down to the in class material to show students, you'll notice that down at the very bottom we have basically six examples that you could use if you would like to. There's the example flash fiction, the flash fiction example two, the Dilworth, the Martone, the Hawkins, and the Dieback. So all of those are fair game for you to write about in your reader response seven. Okay. One thing that I'm also wanting you to review, so this is switching gears from the reader responses into part of what you need to review for next class period is the workshop protocol sheet right here. This tells you how you want to make sure that you're acting in workshop. Uh, and then if we go back to the assignment area, I'm just going to click the back button, you will see that up at the very top is the workshop page as well as the group flash fiction forms will your post. So what I want you to do is click on this workshop flash fiction post direction page, so that right there, and read through, make sure you understand uh, who, which group you're in, how long your draft is supposed to be, what format it's supposed to take, what you're supposed to be doing in each one. Largely, I want you to come back to class on Tuesday with any questions that you have about worksheet because we will start firing on all cylinders next week. And I believe it's group one who posts their flash fiction piece by 11.59 on Thursday. Okay, so that is coming up. So we want to make sure we clear up any of those things. A um, couple last minute things. I'm going to go back again here. And I'm gonna actually go into the area that we were just a moment ago. I thought the back button would take us there. Um, in case you are struggling to come up with some flash fiction pieces, just a reminder, we do have a bunch of prompts listed in this story prompt Google Doc, the web link that takes you there. Okay, um, there are also some other prompts up here. All of those free writes are fair game for your flash fiction piece. Anything you've written except for basically the first two major pieces, the scene piece as well as the short story, are fair game for this. Okay, a uh, couple things we talked about in class was how to uh, use dialogue to add subtext to grow your story outside the, the pages or the word count largely of a fast, uh, flash fiction piece. We talked about using backstory in terms of flashbacks and then, or um, rather than starting it with backstory. And we also talked about throwing the reader into the middle of something and let them play catch up because you want to grab them at the beginning, think of it as a firework, and then they're caught in a trance throughout the whole piece until the very end where you get that turn. All right. So those are kind of the main things that I want to have you remember for next week. Um, I did want to let you know that journal three has been graded. So you should see that in the grade book. Uh, and then the last thing is we do have two extra credit opportunities coming up. 
One of them is the trip to St. Mary's College. And so if I click on that link that is in the uh, in-class material to show students, this is part of St. Mary's Visiting Writer Series. And it is uh, Erica Meitner. Uh, and she will be reading poetry over there. We will be leaving campus in a, in a van that the college got for us. Seats about 15 people, so all together we can take about 12 to um, 12 to 13 students in the van if you're interested. There will be a follow-up assignment to that. I'll discuss that a little bit more in class on Tuesday, but that is Thursday, November 21st, okay? The other extra credit assignment is actually located in the flyer part of Moodle, and that is the open mic night. I've shown this a couple times in class. The open mic night takes place, oh, I went all the way back, so I'm just going to stop sharing my screen here with you and just talk to you about it. So the open mic night takes place on the 12th, so it's coming up, so for us that would be, I believe, a Tuesday. It starts at 5.30 to 7.30, and ultimately what you're doing is you can attend the event, sign in at the beginning, sign in or sign out at the end, and then uh, do the follow-up assignment and you would get the 10 point extra credit. Um, if you attend the event and you read, and do the follow-up assignment, you would get 15 points extra credit in the gradebook. There is a sign-up sheet out in front of the co uh, communications um, suite that you can simply put your name on, and then that would give you priority to read on that evening if you want to. Otherwise, you can just come and listen, have free pizza, and so forth. Okay, so that's basically it. That's all I have for you. Uh, just make sure that you email me if you have any questions as you are working through your flash fiction pieces and your reader response. Uh, and I, I hope you stay warm. I think we're supposed to get some snow. Hopefully it'll avoid the majority of you. But ultimately, um, best wishes for a wonderful weekend. And uh, lastly, stay brilliant.